Welcome everyone to this edition of apps.com webinar brought to you by Intuit uh, Accountant University and apps.com. Today's topic is job and project costing with QuickBooks. Uh, we're going to be talking about three apps, uh, T-Sheets, Noify, and Builder Trend. Uh, today's August 24th. So my name is Hector Garcia. I work and live in Miami, Florida. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, both on the desktop side and uh, QuickBooks Online. And I'm a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network, which is uh, the reason why I do these uh, webinars for Intuit. And um, I have my own uh, website blog all about QuickBooks. Just go to qbblog.com. And I am the co-presenter of the QB Power Hour uh, bi-weekly webinar for uh, QuickBooks Power users. Anyway, the learning objectives for today is we'll talk real quick about uh, apps in general. So how, how do you get to apps? Then we'll talk about um, tracking costs by job, uh, tracking employees' time, because that's actually part of the one of the major uh, cost components of it, um, and checking your project against targets and budgets. We'll discuss that briefly, the budgets part, and then kind of discuss what are the type of customers that would benefit from uh, these type of uh, functions and features. Now, uh, today's webinar is eligible for one hour of CPE. Um, you must be logged in through the entire webinar. We're gonna provide a CPE keyword uh, during the beginning of the webinar, and then uh, you must write that down, and then we'll ask a polling question at the end of the webinar, and you, should, you need to answer that one correctly in order for you to receive your CPE credit. Um, uh, the certificates should be emailed to you. It would be sent via email within three weeks. And make sure you add accountant underscore training at intuit.com to your approved sender list. That way it doesn't go into spam. And you must uh, keep your uh, a copy of it for your records um, just in case because we don't really have a, a, an archive. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're not going to go into a lot of introduction about uh, intro in about QuickBooks apps in general. We will discuss it uh, briefly, but we do have another webinar that just discusses QuickBooks apps. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this into the into the chat box. That way, if you want to check that out later, um, and uh, if the if if you have never worked with an app before with a third party app. That would be a good one to visit. Anyway, um, what is a QuickBooks app? In the context of QuickBooks, uh, an app is an application designed to do a function that QuickBooks is not necessarily designed to do. In some cases, an app will do things that are similar to QuickBooks. However, they tend to specialize into transactions that are a little bit beyond core basic accounting, um, maybe a little bit more industry uh, related. But they do have a common denominator. The common denominator could be the customer's name. It could be um, the invoice amount. It could be your employee's name in terms of, in terms of time tracking. And uh, some of these platforms, uh, some of these apps are platforms upon themselves where QuickBooks is kind of an aftermath. Uh, and some of them are completely dependent on QuickBooks. I so will discuss, we have three apps in which some qualify sort of a, a, as their own platform and some are apps which are more of an extension of QuickBooks Online itself. Now, why use a third-party app? Now, com most common question I have is, how come QuickBooks Online doesn't do all that stuff already? Why do I have to look at a third-party app? And the reality is that Intuit's focus is on making QuickBooks Online a reliable and scalable open platform to just run core accounting functions, but also have QuickBooks Online be the operating system of the small business and allow some of these third parties to concentrate on the micro needs of a particular industry and so many different uh, businesses that operate in different ways. So it, it, it's, it's an Intuit's best interest to make a really good accounting software and it's on uh, you, the accountant or the business owner to search for the app that fits that need uh, the most. So we're gonna be talking about three apps in particular. We'll be talking about T-Sheets, We'll be talking about Noify, and we'll be talking about Builder Trend. Now, these are also in order of, let's call it complexity. Um, T-Sheets would be the most uh, simple, uh, let's call it easier to use app um, that also has a much smaller dimension of, of, of the control of job costing when we're talking about job costing for today. Uh, and Noify is sort of in the middle. It's, it's, it's 
QuickBooks dependent, but it's also a uh, sort of a mini platform itself. And then Builder Trend, which is going to be a much more uh, a bigger of an app, much more heavier app. Um, so basically, when I discuss apps in terms of whether they're light or easy or heavy, I really mean it's really meant to discuss the amount of time you'll be spending on the app. So uh, the context of today, because today's uh, it's all about job and project costing, we have to make the assumption that uh, most of the users of these apps will be construction businesses or be contractors. So uh, these three apps, I'll be talking about how these three apps work in relationship to those industries and also with the relationship of job costing. But in terms of what I mentioned earlier, whether they're light, easy to use or heavy, uh, what I really mean is the amount of time you'll be spending on it. So with T-Sheets, for example, the first app, you'll be spending probably 90% of your time in QuickBooks and then you'll be using T-Sheets just to track employee time and contractor time. Uh, Noify, it's sort of half and half. Noify has a lot of great industry functions in, in construction and bit management and contracting, but it's not 100% dependent on the app. You will be doing a lot of functions in QuickBooks as well. And Builder Trend is sort of the opposite. Builder Trend, you'll probably be spending, if you're a construction company using it, about 90% of your time doing things in Builder Trend, and QuickBooks will sort of just be the place where at the very end you'll reconcile the bank account or something like that. Um, all right, so that's kind of my brief introduction about it. But before we jump into the apps, let's talk about the general job costing features inside QuickBooks Online. So we're going to discuss, uh, without the need for an app, what does QuickBooks Online do in terms of uh, job costing? So let's go through these bullet points. The only version of QuickBooks Online that can do job costing is QuickBooks Online Plus. And job costing basically means assigning a customer or job to a bill, check, expense, credit card, or journal entry that have an expense or a cost of goods sold associated with it. And you want to let your accounting system know that this is for customer A or project B. That way at the end of the day, the only reason with job cost is at the end of the day, we need to know what our profit per job is and whether or not we are on budget or out of the budget. Okay, that's basically why we do job costing. So QuickBooks can generate, uh, we're talking about QuickBooks Online now, can generate a profit and loss by job. Um, and you can even, even run filters and choose which jobs you want to show. QuickBooks Online can also generate a budget uh, for a customer. So you create a general budget, um, sort of a P&L style budget. Um, but what you cannot do is uh, job cost any payroll process through QuickBooks Online. I would say this is probably the most, the biggest um, criticism that QuickBooks Online has, that you cannot run, uh, you cannot job cost your payroll through QuickBooks Online. So we'll discuss what well, is one of the areas that we'll spend more time in. It's we'll discuss how these apps uh, give us job costing reports and include the payroll component or the payroll cost component in those reports because that's pretty much the biggest efficiency that QuickBooks Online has today as of August 24th that you cannot job cost uh, your payroll. And the last one is there is not access to comprehensive job costing reports. So those are the two limitations, uh, no, no job costing for payroll and no access to comprehensive job costing reports. So we'll be discussing from those apps where that information is. All right, perfect. So let's jump into QuickBooks Online and discuss those features briefly. So I'm on QuickBooks Online now. And um, in a nutshell, uh, the way job costing works in QuickBooks Online is we'll create an invoice here real quick. I'll just create an invoice and I'll pick a, a job here at random. So up here in the top right, I'll select a job. So I'll pick, let's say, uh, this job here, and I'm going to give it a price. And I'm just going to give it a price here real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and save and close it. Okay. Then when I actually make expenditures against that job, whether it's a check or a bill. So let's say, for example, I have a check here. And I'm going to pay one of my contractors. So I'll pick one of my contractors here. And I'll put here subcontractor cost of goods sold. And let's say I pay this contractor 24000 
And this is the key element here, where here where it says customer job, I have to select what job or what customer that's involved with, and that's it. That's all job costing is in QuickBooks Online. It's whenever I have a check or a bill or a payment that I pick the customer that I'm paying. So I'll do a save and close here, and I'll also do a bill just to have two, two transactions here. So I'll do a bill here, and I'll pick, uh, let's say, Supply Depot, and then I'll buy some materials, and let's say that's 15,000, and then I'll pick the customer job again. So it's just, again, that simple. It's just picking the customer job uh, whenever having an expenditure, save and close. And then at the end of the day, what QuickBooks Online can do, the only thing that you really can do, it's going to reports and go into business overview and then pull up a profit and loss. Okay, and then I'll pick here all dates just to have everything that's showing up in here. And then um, just narrowing it down to one particular job. So I'll click on customize and then I'll click on filters and then I'll click on customer. I'll hit the drop down and select the customer or the job in which I want to just look at and I hit run report and then I get an isolated uh, profit and loss report based on my income and my sales. Now, in the world of construction, uh, there's a lot more complexities when it comes to just income and expenses. Uh, there, there are situations like uh, budgets and there are situations like uh, partial payments and there, and there are retainage and there's other moving parts that are a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, now, some people recommend to use classes as the jobs or locations. I would say no, don't do that because classes and locations will be useful for other things. So I would say that's how you do that. Now, another a question that I have here is, how do I turn on a uh, customer? So here on the gearbox on the top right, when you go into account and settings, you're gonna see on the left side, a couple of options. You're gonna see company, sales, expenses. If you click on expenses, and you see here where it says bills and expenses. If you actually uh, click on that and you see a couple of check marks, there's one check mark here that says uh, track expenses by customer. Okay, you see it right there, track expenses by customer. And you have to make sure that you have that checked in and that says on because that is the only way that uh, that little box will be enabled. So a lot of people, uh, they see the video, they see the webinar and they're like, well, it doesn't work for me. And it's likely because uh, you don't have that option turned on. The other uh, thing that I mentioned here on the gearbox and account and settings, I'm gonna click on billing and subscription. And I want to make sure that you understand that you have to be on QuickBooks Plus. Only QuickBooks Plus will give you access uh, to uh, th that feature where you're gonna see a customer job as one of the expenses where, so we can job cost. So that's. That's in a nutshell what you can do in terms of job costing with QuickBooks Online. There's a lot of, a, a, another little uh, thing here, which is the budgeting. So when I click on the gearbox on the top right, and then I click on budgeting, uh, you're gonna have the option to create a budget by job. So like the interview will actually walk you through it and it will ask you how, how would you like to do this budget? Um, so you go through the options. And then once you create the budget, it will ask you, is this budget by class? Or is this budget by customer? Or is this basically a general budget for the company? So from this perspective, we'll be doing a budget by customer. And then we'll pick our, our budget. We'll give it here a uh, highway job or something. I normally just put the same name as the customer here. That way it's not uh, complicated. So I hit finish and then I'll, I'll be able to pick uh, the job that I'll be able to um, to do a budget for. Let me just uh, make sure I, I don't think I saved it. So let's do create budget from scratch, hit next, and then do customers. Whoops, I apologize. You can't see the, the screen, the pop-up screen. Give me one second. Let me show my the pop-up screen that came up. That's what the pop-up screen looks like. I apologize. Thank you for letting me know. So when you create the budget, this pop-up screen goes, and this is where you choose. So I'm going to click on the customers, and then I pick the fiscal year. I give it a I give it a name, and I click finish. And then uh, once that job is created, 
I can then select uh, which which job I'm doing this for. So it'll be the highway expansion. And then I can, in this screen, I can basically uh, pick maybe the job completion date or something like that. And I can pick uh, under the sales side exactly what that's going to be. So if I am expecting, let's say, $50,000 by August, you know, I can just add it down there in the bottom, hit save and next. And you can actually add income and expense components to the job. Then when you're finished, you can always run a job versus estimate, uh, sorry, uh, job versus actual report, budget versus actual report. And then in a budget versus actual report, you can actually compare what you budgeted for and uh, what you actually, let me just click here where it says budget versus actual. And then if I'm gonna sc scroll down here to the right and then take a look at my job, there it is 50,000. So I can see that in my budget, I put in that I was expecting 50,000 and I actually received 10,000. So I can actually uh, track my variances and track my uh, actual versus budget. And that's really the most you can do in terms of job costing in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so let's jump into the next app here, which is uh, T-Sheets, okay? So T-Sheets is the first app that is going to possibly help us um, take care of some, some of the job costing deficiencies that QuickBooks Online has. So uh, T-Sheets, the entire app, it's something that could take an entire, probably another whole hour to demonstrate. But I wanna just talk about the job costing components of it, right? So T-Sheets, does employee time tracking, does job scheduling, does timesheet approval, and does job costing reports. In T-Sheets, you will create a timesheet, you will approve it, and you will send it to QuickBooks Online. You can process payroll in QuickBooks Online. However, even if you do that, you will not be able, you will not be able to job cost that time in T-Sheets. So you're gonna have to do one extra step in T-Sheets, um, which is after the timesheet is completed in T-Sheets, you're gonna to have to run a job costing report, which I'll show you exactly how that works. So let me jump into T-Sheets here. So now you should be seeing uh, T-Sheets on my screen. And I'm gonna create a, a timesheet. So I'm just gonna to go to manual time card here. And then I'm gonna pull up a timesheet for, for one of our employees. So here we go, Steve Williams. Okay, and then you're looking at a timesheet for one of our employees that says, uh, you know, which job they were working at. Okay, so they're working at this job um, and they, 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 they put six hours on this job, two hours on this job, eight hours on this job and so forth. And you can just basically see normally, you can just see a timesheet. Okay, that's all you're seeing, it's a timesheet. Okay, so in the timesheet that you're seeing here, if you pass, if you uh, sync that through QuickBooks Online, let me switch over to QuickBooks Online here and kind of show you what that looks like. So I'm now in QuickBooks Online and I'm looking at essentially the exact same timesheet that was posted in T-Sheets. Now I'm seeing it in QuickBooks Online and then I can use this timesheet to create a payroll check. However, again, as I mentioned before, um, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the timesheets in QuickBooks Online will not be job costed uh, because QuickBooks Online doesn't support um, it doesn't support uh, job costing through payroll. Anyway, so once the timesheets are done, uh, there's a report here under custom reports and not every uh, T-Sheets uh, user has it, you, you have to request it, but it's called a job hours by employee report. And then once I click on the job hours by employee report and I pick you know, whether I'm gonna do all employees or one particular employee, so I can actually pick if I wanna do you know, just just Steven or a couple of employees, I can pick which employees I want. I can group them all or just do one and then pick the date range of the week and then click there where it says download um, Excel file. You're gonna see, uh, let me see, I think it was for the previous job. And then you're gonna get a pop-up to open up an Excel file, which I'm gonna have to uh, switch so you can see it on the screen here. So let me switch over your view to the Excel file. Okay, so you should now be seeing my, my Excel file. So T-Sheets produced this report. Uh, this report said that for the first job, Stephen Williams at a rate of $20, and you have, you have to set that up. There's a place in T-Sheets where you set up 
uh, people's rates. Okay. Um, then you can have here $700. That's your job cost. And then you see for job number two, uh, job number two for the hospital job, it was $220. So that's, that's the, the important piece, right? Um, now I have to go into QuickBooks Online and I have to job cost these two items here. So to job cost them, essentially what I do is in QuickBooks Online, I do a new journal entry. So I'm going to switch over to QuickBooks Online here. Okay. So I'll do a journal entry. And this is an exercise that you have to do possibly weekly or monthly, however often you're going to transfer uh, your reports from T-Sheets into QuickBooks Online. And you're going to go uh, from, let's say we're going to have an account called uh, Payroll Expense. And I'll create the Payroll Expense account here real quick. Oops. I'll just create it. I'll just call it Payroll, make it easier. So I have a payroll account, and then I'm going to move over uh, $700 into job, into the first job. And then I'll move $200 into the second job. Okay. And then I'll hit the same account. That way I don't, I don't actually cause any uh, issues in my accounting. And then I'll, I won't pick any jobs. And basically what this will do is will take $900 from your payroll expense and will allocate it into each job. Again, where that information came from, that information came from the Excel file that we downloaded from uh, T-Sheets, the Excel file that T-Sheets gave us. Um, so we didn't have to do any additional work really other than just creating that one journal entry. Okay, so I'll do save and close here. And then when I pull up my profit and loss by job, so let me go into reports and I'll go into business overview and then I'll click on profit and loss. And then I'll filter these to only show me one of the jobs. So I'll pick here customer and then I'll pick, let's say one of the jobs I want to track. I'll hit run report. Let me do this for all dates because I believe those are dated in August. And then you're going to see that payroll, $700 of payroll expenses were allocated to that job. So that's really, in a nutshell, um, what you can do with T-Sheets and QuickBooks Online uh, when it comes to uh, job costing. All right. So let's now stop for a minute for questions. And then while the questions are up, I'm going to put in the CPE keyword. So I'll ask you to write down the CPE keyword, Robin. Write it down, Robin, um, because we're going to get a... Um, a question at the end of the webinar. Uh, so Robin, uh, let's see what questions we have. We have uh, Peter asking, um, <clears throat> can you explain how having done all this work that we can process payroll, who is entering the time? Okay, that's a good, good question. Um, so if uh, you have a centralized bookkeeper in the office that's receiving uh, paper timesheets, uh, you would have to go into uh, possibly in T-sheets and enter all those timesheets by hand and then produce the reports. Uh, or uh, with, a, with an app like T-Sheets, you can have a, a diff, every employee have a username and password and they can log in through their phones or through their, uh, app, through their tablets and log in their time. And ultimately in T-Sheets, you would just approve it as a manager, as a bookkeeper, as an accountant, whatever the process is. Um, then somebody says, another question is, it's payroll being processed through T-Sheets or through QBO. So the, the, the answer is the timesheets are being processed to T-Sheets, but the payroll is being processed to, to QB, through QBO. Or you can even use ADP or Paychex. You can use a third-party system. T-Sheets will actually send that flat file so you can use a third-party payroll company. The big issue here is how do we job cost that payroll? And... Uh, the, the only way to job cost it is to multiply the employee's hours times their rate. And usually that rate is complicated. That could be rate plus taxes, rate plus workers' comp, rate plus benefits, plus workers' comp, plus taxes. It could be multiple things. And uh, and T-Sheets just gives you that one report that you can use for that. Okay. Um, it, so the the whatever the workers' comp code is or the taxes is, 
uh, you're going to have to add that into the rate uh, manually. So so in T-Sheets, you don't really uh, break it down where, say, the rate is this much, workers' comp is this much, taxes are this much. You're going to have to figure out what the burden rate is with all of that. And for our example, we just used a flat $20. Okay, so we've had the, 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 the CPE keyword up for a few minutes, for a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. So write it down, Robin, that's the CPE keyword. I'll go ahead and delete the slide. All right, no more of that. Okay, so let's switch over now to NoFI. Now, NoFI is that, uh, that app in the middle of the three that I mentioned to be uh, you know, light, but also not really heavy from the perspective that you may be on the app the entire time. Uh, but it will uh, talk to QuickBooks. Uh, uh, it will sync uh, quite a bit, and I'll actually show you those those syncing features. One of the things that I really, really like about it, I don't know if it has to do with my experience with my construction clients, but there isn't that many apps out there that will produce an AIA-style invoice, um, which is basically a document that gives you a schedule of payments based on the progress of the jobs and it complies with government jobs and certain um, standards in some in some government in some uh, construction projects where it requires that big spreadsheet and in and NoFi can do it so that's one of the things I really like NoFi also has a dashboard for job profitability that's actually one of the best features about it is you get a, you get a single page where you see all your jobs and all your prof, profitability per job and it's really easy to set up an estimates versus actual reports, which I mentioned earlier to be something that QuickBooks Online is deficient of. So before we go to the demo, let's just go through a couple of slides. This is what the dashboard looks like. You will see all the active jobs in one page. You would see all the unbilled amounts. These are all the billable expenses that haven't been billed yet. You're going to see outstanding invoices. You're going to see outstanding bills. And you'll be able to see sort of across the board and average job profitability. I really like the fact that you get a single report or dashboard that shows you average profitability per report across all uh, reports. Now, when you create a, a there's one thing, another thing I really like is when you go create a new job, um, when you create a, a new, new job, um, it's gonna ask you, how are you gonna invoice these or what's the style of this job? And it gives you three options. It gives you the fixed price contract, where you basically just put in the price that the client is going to pay for, for the entire project. And then if there's a change order, you can do a change order, but then it tracks percentage of completion of the whole job. Then there's also the middle one, which is the general contractor uh, bid project, which can do the ANA style applications of payments, as I mentioned earlier. And that one's going to be a little bit more involved um, because you do have to put um, each line item of the estimate and you have to put the cost and the and the sales price for all of it. And then you have the most complex of them all, which is the cost plus method, where you actually have to break down basically vendor by vendor, purchase by purchase, uh, what the cost is going to be and then what the uh, what the, uh, the sales price is going to be and whether or not you're going to add a markup or a visible markup to that. So we'll, we'll show you that real quick when we demonstrate the software. Um, this is the jobs management screen. This is the one that I mentioned where you can see all your jobs. You can see build revenue, unbuild revenue. You can see uh, costs uh, from purchase orders. You can see costs from labor. And that's, again, that's, as, as we mentioned earlier, that's the deficiency that QuickBooks has. Uh, Normify does it really well. Uh, you can plan and track. This is the, much, this is the more in-depth portion of it where you actually have uh, phases broken down and you have each cost component of the phase, and you can actually create your purchase orders uh, straight from here, uh, from the planning stage. So it's actually really, really neat um, because it, you can use the estimate as the work, uh, as the work uh, order uh, to create all your purchase orders and all your purchases from. And then, as I mentioned, the one thing I was really impressed by was the EC ANA style invoicing that gives you a schedule of payments uh, all based on the phase or the individual uh, line item on it. And if you've worked with clients in construction and you've been requested to automate this before, then you get it, you know, why I would be really impressed by this and why I would really like this. Okay, so let's go into the demo of the software itself. So let me open uh, NoFi. 
So uh, Noify, I'm just going to go to the, the home screen here. Noify, this is what it looks like when you first log into it. Um, you're going to have a couple of things here on the left side. You're going to have the dashboard button. You're going to have the contract jobs button. You're going to have the time tracker. You're going to have for your purchase orders. You're going to have your bills and you're going to have your invoices. And that's in a nutshell, really all that you will be doing. Um, if I click on contract jobs as the first tab here, I can see all of my active jobs. Okay, so all of my active jobs that are in NOAA 5 uh, at the moment. I love this screen because it's just so easy to, to digest the information. Uh, so easy to uh, to digest it. You're going to see the revenue, what I have billed. Okay, and if I click on it, I get into a detail screen. So I can see what I have billed, if I have any retainage, if I have any work in process. Uh, we can see what we have uh, paid in terms of materials and what we have in labor. And the way we, we basically... Uh, enter all those elements of, of, of expenses. I'll show you in a second. Let me go back here for a second. Is through our original uh, bid. So I'm going to click on uh, that link button that takes me to the schedule of values. So this is uh, the original um, uh, proposal that we put together where we actually told it what, what each uh, phase was going to cost and how much we, ha we have invoiced uh, so far. If I click on edit schedule of values, I can actually um, add a line and, 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 and modify it. And I can also add a change order all from here. So if something was changed, I can put here, you know, last minute changes, whatever I want to call it. Let me just put here, I'll put here material and I'll put here, let's say 2,500. And then I'll do, I can actually from here, uh, enter the you know comments about what it is. I can also break it down in terms of internal costs. It's also really, really neat. And then I can send it out for signatures. So one of the great things I love about this app is that any change orders you make or any proposals that you make, you can actually email your client the document that tells you exactly what the original estimate is, what the change orders are, and the client can digitally sign them, send them back, or you can have you know, these, uh, all these documentation all here ready to go, okay? So let me go ahead and close this, okay? And then I'll go ahead and close this screen as well. I'm gonna go back to plan and track and show you something that's really cool about this too, um, especially for tracking uh, expenses. So down here, I have put in that under phase one, I have material expenses, I have labor. Um, and from here, from this screen here, I can actually order materials. So let's say for example, I budgeted for six thousand dollars worth of materials i can just click here it says order materials select a specific line item inside of my job and create a po in which i will select my vendor and this vendor comes let me just switch over here quickbooks real quick it comes from my quickbooks vendor screen so any vendor that i have in my quickbooks vendor screen is going to be in my whoops there it is it's going to be in my noify app so i'll pick the vendor let's say construction supply depot and then I'm gonna buy let's say twenty three hundred dollars worth of materials and then I select the job that's already uh, selected and I can even select uh, the face within the job which it's automatically selected because I picked it from the planning screen I click on verify and submit hit submit now my PO has been created okay so I would basically um, you know Print the PO, send it to my to my provider, to my supplier, uh, 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 order the product. Okay, that's all, all the stuff is going to be here, um, and then I can even I can add comments if I want to. Eventually, I can also upload a supporting document. So let's say I had uh, some sort of a email conversation with my vendor, some negotiation about this uh, this materials. I can all drag and drop it here. So it's a great document manager. From that perspective and then when i go back into my into my job let me go back into my dashboard here and i go to the specific job i can see here uh, what i've spent in materials and i'll wait for that to load and scroll down a little bit and then i'm going to see everything that's spent on materials of course i have to approve the po and that sort of thing um, but that's pretty much how the whole dynamic works let me do labor uh, now because that's one of the most 
again, again what QuickBooks doesn't, doesn't have is the, the time tracking component. So I'm going to click on time tracking and then I'm going to select uh, my employee. And let's say that uh, this employee for for that job, okay, so it spent, uh, there's the information. So I'm going to do a, for the next week, I'm going to click on new activity. I'll select the job. So let's say it's under phase one. And then this particular employee worked, let's say, eight hours on this job one day, seven hours on the job the other day, and so forth, right? Just like a regular timesheet. Again, if you're using uh, uh, this app, you would not be using T-Sheets because that would be redundant. So you either use this app or use T-Sheets. I actually don't really don't know what would be the, why you would use both. So this would basically take over T-Sheets because you want something more than just time tracking. Uh, no, if I would do that. So I'm going to click on save and submit. I will hit OK. So now that the timesheet is created into my uh, NoFi system, um, I, I will be able to prepare my, my payroll through whatever payroll system I do with that time. However, what I really wanted to do is to make sure that that time is uh, properly job costed. So um, here where it says review time, this is where actually I can approve timesheets or decline them, reject them, and put notes in it or adjust them if I need to. And down here, you see how there is a, a internal cost calculation. There is 726. So that's what's going to be posted as a cost to the job. Okay, so I'm going to click on approve selected, hit OK. And then when I go back into my uh, job, I'm going to see that my labor increased from whatever it was before now to um, a different a dollar amount. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how... Um, how all this, the dynamic of job costing works in NoFi. Uh, from a, a couple of initial thoughts here, uh, one of the things that I like is just how easy it is to create jobs and, and, to, and to track them from this screen. Um, it will interact with QuickBooks. So for example, you see here revenue 12,000, where's my revenue? Let me... Uh, let me pull up by where's my contract. Let me open up the, the contract for a second. So uh, give me one second. I lost my, my train of thought here. Oh, here it is. So here where it says invoiced, that's for how much I've invoiced, $12,000. So I'm going to click on invoice now. And then the invoicing process happens in NoFi. It, it shouldn't happen in QuickBooks. It will happen in NoFi. I will pick, you know, whatever week I'm billing for. And then it's going to ask me, you know, from your contract, how much are you billing? And I can say, well, I'm going to go ahead and bill whatever whatever happens to be, right? I can actually you know, choose what I'm going to bill. So from here, I'm going to bill, let's say, 25% of this one. I'll bill 50% of this one, and I'll bill, let's say, 30% of this one, okay? So by picking all the percentages, I can click here on View and Finalize, and the system will tell me exactly what the payment due is, and it will accumulate the old build amounts with the new build, obviously with the new uh, completion percentages. You hit uh, complete. You can actually email the invoice to the client from here. You see this little sync button here. If, if it says syncing, that means that it's programmed to sync to QuickBooks, or I can just click on send to QuickBooks again and force it to sync right away if I can't wait the few minutes that it takes uh, for it to sync or whatever it is. And then you get in the bottom, you immediately get a schedule of values, which again, this is actually really, really, really important um, for a lot of construction companies um, because they need that information to be a little bit more uh, detailed than, um, than uh, that the way uh, normal QuickBooks invoicing works. So let me switch over uh, to QuickBooks real quick. And I'm going to go into customers. And then I'm going to go into my job here and then now in quickbooks i see uh the invoices that were created i see the previous invoice that was created the new one i actually clicked on sync to quickbooks so i sent it uh twice right because i was a little bit uh, impatient there but all the invoices get sent over when i open the invoice the invoice in quickbooks is just broken down uh by dollar amount based on the line item but it is not meant for you to use a quickbooks uh invoice 
a QuickBooks invoice for uh, for this, it, it's meant for you to use the NoFi invoices. Now, why use the NoFi invoice? Just because of the level of detail um, that NoFi manages and also the, the style of the invoice that QuickBooks uh, doesn't support, okay? Let me go back here for a second. I just wanna show you one more thing. When you're in the job, you can click on what's called a value report. And I'm gonna open an Excel file and show you. A lot of people love this. Let me switch over to the Excel file. Let me see. Okay, you should be looking at my Excel file. So this is a report that, um, that NoFi creates. A lot of, um, in my, what I've seen, I've observed in you know, a lot of construction companies, they request reports in Excel with uh, the original valuation, the invoice amount, and the balance amount. So NoFi creates that. Again, this is all for mostly construction companies. Um, it creates that right off the bat. Okay, so that I find that to be just really, really powerful. One of the reasons why I liked uh, NoFi so much. Um, to be honest with you, I try to be careful with uh, making statements like I like this app or I love this app because I'm I'm just reviewing the apps. I'm talking about them. I'm, I'm being, I try to be as impartial as possible. But I've used many construction applications in the past and in struggle with construction companies and QuickBooks Online together just because of the, the efficiency that QuickBooks Online has. And I think that uh, NoFi, these people got a, a nice, will a nice balance between, um, you know, the needs of complexity of the construction contractor business and also the need to have uh, the workflow to be very simple. And the reason for that is because I'm going to switch over to the next app, which is um, Builder Trend. And Builder Trend, it's, uh, let me switch over to the slides here. Uh, Builder Trend is actually the more mature of all the apps here. Builder Trend has been in the market for about 10 years. And Builder Trend is what I, I call it a much more comprehensive app. Uh, Builder Trend is designed for you to do essentially four functions. Uh, lead management, which means Builder Trend is designed for you to manage all your incoming leads, all your bids, right? So before the construction project is a project, the idea is that you're also working all your proposals, everything through Builder Trend. Um, task and activity management. So anything has to do with scheduling, uh, people, resources, job completions, inspections. It's all designed for you to do it through Builder Trend. Um, you can also mix job related and not job related tasks. You know, there are tasks like you know, renew my annual general contractor license, not to do with a particular job, but it's also, it's all designed for you to use it within Builder Trend. Um, and, it, and, and the most important one is um, client selection portal. I would say that's what makes Builder Trend particularly unique. The client selection portal allows you to have a, 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 an access for your client to view the status of the job to make selections. So if, if you have any clients in the custom construction business, on the custom construction business, you know that in many situations, clients change their mind. You know, they don't want the white fridge, they want the stainless steel fridge. They don't want, you know, the, the uh, mar marble countertop, they want stainless steel mar mar uh, countertop, whatever. So in a construction project, sometimes you can't just stop and wait for the client to make all those selections. What you can do is you can build in those selections with their prices and their allowances, all within the software, and give the client the ability to choose and digital sign for them. That way it doesn't stop the project. So obviously for much larger uh, builder companies and for companies that, that have customer interaction throughout the building stage will benefit from that. Okay, so let's go through a couple of stages, uh, a couple of uh, screenshots here, and then we'll go to the demo. So this is what the budget screen looks like, uh, where you enter all the estimated costs, everything you're going to charge your client, and then keep track of uh, the cost that you have on the project versus what um, what you budgeted for, and just kind of keep track where you stand there. That's what the budget screen is. This is what the customer selections screen looks like. So basically we can have a particular line item 
like in this case, backsplash. So we can have two types of backsplash, stainless steel and stone, and we can have both prices in there. And we can pre-build the project with the base one, let's say for the stainless steel, and then give the client the choice to change it later on and then automatically create um, you know, the addendums to the contract, create the, or, uh, the change orders. I mean, this is really, really big for mostly custom home builders. Um, th there's a, a job price management screen that tracks the original uh, job, the original job uh, quote, all the add-ons like the approved selections, change orders, payments received. This is this is uh, the working document that interacts with your client uh, for the most part. There's the lead management screen. Again, this is where you would track all your jobs that are not jobs yet, all the all the bids, all the proposals. You, you want to track them in here, and it's a full CRM system for construction companies. And then one of the most unique and powerful features of Builder Trend is bid management. So we're talking about specifically receiving bids from your contractors or receiving bids from your supply manufacturers. So the idea behind using bid management in Builder Trend is you create your entire um, your entire proposal, you create your entire uh, your entire job, your estimate, and then uh, you go out and select which of your vendors that are loaded in the system will have access to the details of that job and which line item details of that job, and they can come in there and they can put bids and they can send their proposals, and then you can have multiple bids that you're managing, um, and then you can make a decision of which vendor you're going to work with and then accept it and then turn around and, and, and use that to create a purchase order or a bill or whatever, okay? Um, so that's a, a real, real important feature, something that makes Builder Trend very unique. So let's jump to the software now. And this is what Builder Trend looks like. And what you're seeing here uh, essentially is uh, the default screen. You can actually m a, a brand the screen with your own logo. You can add color scheme, you can add a background. Um, because this is a much heavier software from what I described as heavy as somewhere where you're going to be basically 20, eight hours a day, you're going to be working in Builder Trend. Um, it needs to be more customizable because it, over time it becomes almost a, a software that belongs to the, to the construction company, not so much a third party like Builder Trend. Now, I have some questions here that I didn't answer before. Uh, NoFi, NoFi only works with QuickBooks Online. Builder Trend, the one we're looking at here, works with QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online and Desktop. So the first app we sh we, we uh, shown, T-Sheets, works with QuickBooks Online and Desktop. Noify, the one right before this one, the one in the middle, only QuickBooks Online. And Builder Trend, the one we're doing now, does both QuickBooks uh, Desktop and Online, okay? Uh, somebody else is asking me, does Noify have a place where you scan the receipts and um, and take photos of the jobs and take and take jobs. Yeah, so um, I already did the Noify uh, demo, but yeah, you can upload um, attached to any expenses. You can upload um, any receipts you want. Actually, you can upload documents almost everywhere. Anyway, uh, going back to um, going back um, to uh, Builder Trend. So this is what the dashboard looks like. You're gonna see all your jobs. On the left side here, uh, you pick the job that you want to work in. So I'm here on this uh, condo job. And this condo job is tied. Let me switch to QuickBooks Online to show you. This one's actually tied to this job here. So in QuickBooks, I have a job here called uh, condo job under the customer ZZ group. And there's the invoice that I created through Builder Trend. But let me go back into uh, Builder Trend here. So from here, you have many components. I'm not going to talk about the entire software package. I'll talk about just, you know, job costing components of it, which is what the theme of the webinar is. Um, and then I'm going to go here to where it says financial, and then I'm going to click on bids. And I want to just show you real quick um, the bids portion. So under the bids portion, this is where we create a, a bid package, which could be certain areas of the job. So let's say, you know, windows and doors, is, it's an area of the job that I want to be bidding. So I'm going to create a new bid package and call it uh, windows and doors, for example. Okay. And then here where it says requests, uh, I can put any sp specific text you know, about the job itself. 
Um, so that's where I explain basically what it is. And I'm gonna click on save. Okay, and then I have my Windows and, and uh, uh, Windows and Door package. And then under invite now, I select uh, which of my which of my subcontractors um, I'm going to in, invite to it. So I can actually pick. So for example, I want to invite this um, this subcontractor and this subcontractor, and I'm going to hit save. You can actually invite both of them to log in into Builder Trend, and that's the idea that both of them log in into Builder Trend and they upload their own bids. Okay, if they don't log into Builder Trend, you can just go in there yourself and you can um, upload a bid. You can put put the amount. So if the if if the vendor didn't you know log in there, I can come in here and put you know seventy five thousand, whatever it is. Add my bid in there. I can add some notes, um, upload attachments. Uh, up here, I can add an attachment and they send me a picture or maybe a quote. Hit save. And then whether you add the, the vendor bits yourself or they upload and they send it to you, they're all going to be here. And then later on, you can uh, decline or accept them. So this is actually a much more robust construction management system because it gets into the vendor bit management area. And if you've ever consulted with uh, construction, larger construction companies, you know that's an area that they really want to uh, control. Because otherwise, in QuickBooks, you can't really log vendor bids. You know, um, you would have to create a purchase order for each one, and it becomes really confusing. So this is something that is completely outside of QuickBooks, and you do it only on the software. Okay. So let me go into um, now budget. Now the budget is where. Uh, this is where most of the accountants uh, live, is in this world here, um, which is you can, in each individual line item of the estimate, you can um, open the estimate or you can create particular line items. So I'm going to go here to estimate item and then cost code, which I'll show you in a second. This is our catalog of uh, products and services that we have. In the construction business, this is the default one that comes in there. You can actually create your own, modify them. Let me, I'll put here on the windows. And then I'm going to tell my client that because somebody quoted me 75,000, I'm going to put here 100,000. Whoops, I missed a zero. I hit add. Okay, so that all adds up to the cost components in here. So I'm going to close that. And then you see how that line item gets added to my complete estimate down here. I can, I, it calculates my running total for the job. It calculates what my direct costs are and all those direct costs come from the purchase orders. So I'm gonna go create a purchase order here real quick. So I'll create a purchase order. So I'm gonna go to, I'll pick one of these uh, POs. I'll create a new PO, create a new PO here and I'll pick my cost code, so let's say it's Windows, and I'm gonna pay, let's say, $30,000. Okay, um, in here, this is my purchase order to my vendor, okay? I can give it a title, I can uh, assign it to a subcontractor, which obviously, um, it's only for subcontractors that have been approved to bid on the jobs. You know, that's the whole bid um, approval process. Okay, and then I click on uh, save and release. So it creates the PO. You can uh, send the PO from here. You can mark it as complete. This is more for for that part of management. You can also uh, mark it. Uh, you can also make the payment. Again, all this stuff will be done through Builder Trend. You wouldn't be doing this uh, through QuickBooks, right? Because this is really designed for you to do it all through Builder Trend. And in QuickBooks, all you're really gonna do is reconcile the banks and reconcile. Uh, the deposits, that sort of thing, but you are going to be doing everything uh, through here uh, pretty much. So once you create those those POs and you go to your budget, uh, you're going to see all those direct costs rack up, and this is how um, and this is how it it does it pretty much. And there's other areas worth uh, looking at. Um, for example, here under the selections menu, this is where you can create, as I mentioned earlier, you can create all the options your client will have, and then you will create a um, a portal for your client to log in and choose those things. You can also use the smartphone app 
or the tablet to make those selections, especially if you got pictures. Um, that, that, that's just a great interactive way uh, to work with your client. Here's where you do the timesheet, uh, same thing. So I can, uh, I can clock in, clock out, or I, rec I can record a shift so I can select you know, who, my, who my employee is, my resource, and put in you know, the time that they started working. Time in, time out, it'll calculate the hours for me, okay? And I select the job site that they're, they're on, I hit save, and then those um, those hours get also added to the cost of the project. And you can also schedule them, which is also a really uh, powerful piece, is the scheduling part. Uh, build the trend, it, it's so, so I'll make my own statement about that because I made a sort of pretty big statement about Notify. Build the trend is something that I am still personally learning. I have one client using it and even my client is, is still learning how to use it and for the time being i'm mostly just managing the the quickbooks part so when i actually create the invoice and i see the invoice that comes from builder trend that's what it looks like i just make sure that that stuff ties to the bank uh, the builder trend it, it's, a, it's a piece of software that it's likely to take hours to learn um, however it, it does become sort of the livelihood of the construction business um, so I can't make such a bold statement as I made with uh, NoFi just because I don't I haven't uh, played with it as in depth as NoFi, but uh, but you know but it does have a lot more stuff than NoFi does. I think it just basically boils down to um, you know what the needs of the of the client are. Okay, so I wanna um, I'll I'll do a quick uh, conclusion uh, basically on the three apps and and um, towards the end, but I'll let me run the polling question first because most people do need to leave on top of the hour. So let me run the polling question and then I'll answer some of your questions and then uh, kind of give my last statements and my last uh, uh, opinion about these, these apps. So please answer the CPE keyword if you want uh, your, um, your credit, your CPE credit. Okay, somebody's asking me, does uh, Builder Trend handle cost codes? The answer is yes. Uh, Builder Trend has an excessive pre-build uh, cost code database. I didn't show that. I probably should have showed that. Um, and um, you can modify it. You can change it. Uh, but yeah, it can handle cost codes. So you can create your own cost codes and the pricing for the cost codes. So the answer to that is yes. Builder Trend can do cost codes. Um, no, if I doesn't have a robust uh, code code uh, cost code list. However, you can create your own um, item list per se, if you want to call it that. But that information would actually flow through from QuickBooks. So in Noify, it's a lot more QuickBooks dependent. It, it, you would have to take your item list from QuickBooks and use it um, in the in um, in Noify in in combination. But in, in Builder Trend, you would have your own in-depth cost code uh, database. All right, so the CP keyword has been up for about a minute and a half. We got 10 more seconds. If you want your CP keyword, please answer your CP question. And then we got about three more minutes left for me to um, show you the last couple of slides here. Okay, CP keyword going once, going twice, gone. All right, okay, so let me go into Let's go into, okay, so this is the last slide here, uh, or the last slide on, on the apps. The consultant's opportunity is the following. Um, if you're an accountant or a QuickBooks consultant, and you have these three apps, plus many other apps that deal with job costing and construction, how do you approach it? So if you have a client that has very, very light job costing needs, and their only deficiency at the moment is tracking uh, time, as a component of cost, and they are running payroll through QuickBooks, so they're running payroll somewhere else, I think T-Sheets would be the best solution uh, because it's relatively easy to install. It's inexpensive. Most T-Sheets clients are paying between $25 and $30 a month, depending on the number of, um, of employees. That matters too. But, um, but, but I mean, there's a, a lot of other features that T-Sheets has, but in terms of job costing, I would say it's the most simplified way. You get one spreadsheet, you do one journal entry, easy. Um, if you're working with construction clients that 
are dealing maybe with three, four jobs at a time. Um, a and A billing, it's a it's a need. Um, they're looking for entry level job costing that's easier easy to use right off the bat and is really friendly. Although it doesn't have as many complex features as Builder Trend, I would look into NoFi. Um, I believe NoFi it's in the sixty to ninety dollar range. Um, uh, so I don't uh, I don't have the exact pricing for that. And then Builder Trend that's going to be not just a little bit more expensive. That's going to start at around ninety nine dollars and then go up depending on how many jobs you have. I have a client that's paying a couple hundred dollars a month for Builder Trend. And they're only running about three or four projects at the moment, but it, it's a much more robust software and it's worth it. Uh, from what I've seen, it's definitely worth it. And I'm not, not here to make a determination of that. So if you're looking for complete construction management end to end from the vendor process, from the from the lead process to to bidding process, to customer management, change order process, uh, then you look into Builder Trend. So those are sort of the three things I like to say about those three. Um, all apps available are, are going to be found in apps.com. You just go to apps.com website. You can search based on the industry, based on your need. You can add it. Most apps have a 30-day trial or 15, or 14-day trial, 14, 30-day trial, so you can test them for free. Um, Builder Trend, I had to pay up front just to do a test. So Builder Trend, I couldn't figure out how to do a, a free trial, but NoFi and T-Sheets, I was able to. And inside apps.com, you can go to the resource center. And there's articles that people like me and other um, fellow users write on it and recommend you looking into that too. Okay, I don't know if I have any more questions. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions here. Um, there are some questions about uh, downloading the slides. Let me see, uh, the slides should be here somewhere. Uh, the link to the slides are not here. So in the email, in the email you receive, you must have received a, a link to the slides. I'm not sure why you're having an issue. Um, you know, hopefully they'll be on the, on the next one, but I don't have copy. I'll tell you what, I'll give you my email address. I'll just give you my email address here. If you, if you need the slides, um, just email me and I'll get them for you. Uh, Cause I don't know what happened to it. So here's my email. Hector at GarciaCPA.com. So for whatever, whatever reason you couldn't get it, I'll, I'll email you the slide. So that's my email. Um, so I apologize. There was an issue with the with the link there. So my email is Hector at GarciaCPA.com. If you want the slides, I can send them to you. No problem. Just email me. Remind me which webinar it is. I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, let's see what are the questions we have here. I think uh, some people are already logging off. That's good. Okay, we're pretty much done. Let's see, um, let me see, two, two, two. Um, is there a mobile time component in Builder Trend? Okay, that's a good question. I know there's a there's an app for Builder Trend. I just don't know if you can clock in and out or do timesheets, so I can't answer that question. I apologize. I recommend you look into the website for that. Um, let's see, does NoFi work with QuickBooks Desktop? As far as I know, it does not. It, it does not work with QuickBooks Desktop. Um, it would be nice because um, I do have some QuickBooks Desktop clients as well. But it's important to keep in mind that QuickBooks Desktop is already a pretty powerful software for uh, job costing. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to just mostly solve for the QuickBooks Online deficiencies. Um, and that's it. I don't think I have any more uh, questions. So anyway, thank you very much for attending the webinar. Hopefully this was uh, helpful information. Go, out, go ahead and go to apps.com. Test out, test out the apps, and hopefully um, you can uh, get more clients in the construction and job costing world. Thank you very much.